Hi everybody, it's Joe Krug from FinSuite. In this video, we learn how to build a Webflow CMS dynamic tabs component. We're going to build a tabs component from scratch, absolutely nothing on the page for you to follow step by step. This is great for beginners, intermediate level people who really wanna understand how all of this works. We will have a dynamic amount of tabs, tab components, tab buttons, and it's all powered with the FN Suite CMS library. Let's jump in and see how it works. We're in the live example going over the tabs component. We are inside a fresh Webflow build. We're going to put our tabs component on the page. We're going to set up a tiny CMS and we are going to use the FN Suite CMS library to make these tabs truly Webflow dynamic. Let's jump in and first create a little tiny CMS here. We'll call this My Sweet Collection. And here in My Sweet Collection, we're going to go and add a description. We're going to add a, a tab name. That's right, we are going to add a tab name here. Not required, but if you want your tab name specific, you can actually name it as a field in the CMS. And I will go and add an image here. Let's go and create an image. Now, let's go and create the image, create the collection. We'll go and add 20 items to this collection. So we have some sample data to work with and we will create a tabs component with 20 dynamically generated tab buttons corresponding to their 20 tab content panes. Let's do this. The very first thing we'll do is create a parent structure so that our tabs component isn't just on the top left of the page. I'll go in here and call this FS section. I'll be using the prefix FS dash for everything in case you have to copy and paste this into your build and you don't want any conflicts in class naming. So we have our FS section. Let's give that padding top at 100, create a bit of space here, and create a bit of space on the side with 50 pixels. Cool. Now let's go in and add a content structure. Let's call this FS content. I'll go and create this at 100% width. Let's go and add a max width of, let's say 1000 pixels. Let's do 1200 pixels here. And let's center this for when the screen is extra large, we want to make sure that this is always centered on the page. Auto margin left, auto margin right is going to do that for us. Great, we have our really simple parent structure so we can look at this in a nice way. Now let's go into the elements panel and add our tabs component. We are using the native Webflow tabs component here. This is going to be dynamic for us. We have our CMS library visual script writer here. We're going to be jumping into this at the end of the video. What I want to make all of us aware of now is that there are three classes that we have to be mindful of when we go and build this. We have our CMS class list. This is the content feed, the dynamic feed that will be feeding our tabs component. We have our tab class. This is the tabs component, the entire tabs element. And then we have our tab name. This is a class that will be given to a CMS dynamic field that will hold the name of that tab button. Great, let's now go back into designer and set this up. First, let's go and open up Navigator here and see what we got with our tabs. As with every tabs component, it has an identical structure and we will be following this identical structure. I'm going to go call this, I'm gonna give a class to every single one of these just so we're super clear on what we're doing here. Let's call this FS tabs. Let's call this FS tabs menu. Let's call this the FS tabs content. And let's call these FS tabs link. I'll go copy this and we will continue to paste them in here. 
Nice. And we'll do the same thing for this. We're on the pane. Nice. Okay. So we have all of these classed up. The only class that matters in all of these is our FS tabs class. The class on the entire component, that's what's going to go into that visual script writer. Great, now let's go and create our structure. We're going to go inside the first pane and put in a collection list wrapper. Let's go and connect that over to my suite collections and we're going to limit that to just one item inside. If you've ever set up dynamic tabs before, you may have you may be putting in a different collection list for every single tab pane. We're going to do this in the walkthrough to show you how you can visually manage the styles here, but we're actually going to be creating a dynamic amount of panes, a dynamic amount of buttons, and all the content in each of those will be dynamic. So let's go and put these placeholders in for now. I'll go and apply a class to each layer of our collection list wrapper. Let's call this the FS, the FS collection dash wrapper. I just copied FS collection dash as our prefix to all three of these. Let's call this the list and the item. So we have our collection wrapper, our collection list, and our collection item. We will put one more element in here called the FS, what should we call this? The FS, let's call this the dynamic content. Cool. I'm going to go and apply 100% width 100% height to each layer in this list. We'll go and apply 100, 100. Let's go and apply 100, 100. Let's go and apply 100, 100. And 100, 100. Great. Now with this tabs component, we're going to go and put a bit of size into this content. Let's go and call this, actually let's put in the content first before we get into that. Let's go and make this a flex horizontal like this. Great, align to the top, justify to the left. Now let's go and add in some dynamic content here. This is what we are this is what we want our tabs to look like. We are going to style this collection list with the intention of it being live with this layout. So I'll go and attach an image here. Let's definitely go and apply a class here so we do not have this big giant image. Let's make it 300 pixels. Great. Now let's go add an inner div to break up this difference between the text and the image. And we will go and start adding our information in here, our dynamic information. So we'll go add a title, we'll add some paragraph text, and let's go and add this link here. Great. So this will be a learn more. This is going to be, let's do this, FS link, sure. We'll go and make this red. Let's go and attach this to our description field. And let's go and attach this to our name field. Great. Now let's go and create a bit of space here. Let's make this centered. That will look nice. And yeah, this is this is fine. We're not we're not looking to do a lot of styling here. I'm just going to finish up by applying some spacing here, a bit of padding. Great, this looks awesome. We have our tabs and this is looking exactly like we want it to. Now let's go and duplicate this collection list wrapper into each of these panes. And let's make sure that all of them look good together. 
So we have tab one, two, and three. Perfect. This is exactly what we want. Now I'm going to show you what's actually happening behind the scenes. I will go and remove this. We'll keep the first one and we're going to disconnect all of the references to CMS inside this dynamic content. I will remove this. I will remove this. You don't have to do this, by the way. I am just showing you what this is to help you understand what's actually going on here. There we go. Okay, this is what we want to show. This is what's actually happening behind the scenes. When we go to publish the site, we're not going to have a separate collectionless wrapper in each of our panes. We are essentially removing all three of these layers. We're taking out the structure of the wrapper, the list, and the item. So what is actually happening? What, in, what you will see inside Inspector, what is actually happening in the HTML is this first element inside the collection item is being copy and pasted into the tabs pane. And it will look like this on the published site. So that's why we were applying the 100, 100. We want everything to be expanded. We don't want to be applying any unique styles to these elements. They're all gone. So be mindful of that. This is just to help you visualize your dynamic content to maybe apply some interactions and to see how this works inside designer. But we are not working with the collection wrappers, we are copy and pasting this first child inside the item. Great, now let's go and add a bit of styling here to make sure these look okay. We'll go and let's do this. And for our current, let's go and do this. Great, okay, nice. We're styled up. Let's go and even let's let's apply a little bit of styling here. There we go. Okay. Let's make this bold. Nice. Cool. All right. Great. This is looking great. And if I go and play around with preview, we'll see exactly what we want here. Great. All right. Now, and let's also center this. I thought this looked quite nice. Yeah. Great. We also need to define our tab name. The tab name is what's going to go in here. We have tab one, tab two, tab three. We need to go and put real names in there, not tab one, two, and three. They need to be generated by CMS. So let's go and do that. I'm going to go and add a div in here. Inside this div, I'm going to put some text and I'm going to get the text from our tab name. Wow, this is a bit long. Okay, you know what? Let's do name. Let's keep this as the name here. This is a bit shorter. This will look much better when we put all the tabs together. So I will go and call this FS tab name. This is another important class that we will go and put in the visual script writer. I'm going to now make this hidden. We don't want to see this tab name inside the content. We're only putting it here to generate our tabs. So I will go and do FS hide and we will go and hide this. This can be totally hidden. Great. Now let's copy and paste this collection wrapper to the end of the page. We are going to copy this and I will paste it at the end of the section. It can go anywhere. It does not matter. We are going to hide this structure anyway. Now we need to apply one more class and we need to show all the items that we want in this feed. This collection list is essentially working as our feed. I'm going to unlimit items. We see all 20 items that we generated automatically. And because this list is 20 items, that's how many tabs will be created. That's how many tab panes will be created. And it's going to go inside to grab our FS dynamic content. So let's apply our third important class here as FS 
dynamic feed. So our three important classes are FS dynamic feed, our FS tab name, and our outermost tab class of FS tabs. So now let's go use those three classes in the Visual Script Writer to generate the JavaScript we need to make this work. Let's first give our tab class, this is the component that we're working with, FS tabs. FS tabs is what we are working with right up here. Next, we're going to grab our tab name. This is what we went over next, the FS tab name. This is what's going to generate the names inside our tab buttons. And we'll call this the FS tabs name. Tab name, FS tab name, excellent. And the last one is the CMS list class. This is our feed. This is what will actually generate the correct amount of tabs. So we'll go to our FS dynamic feed class. We'll go and apply a display none. We don't want to see this feed on the site. We just want to see it in the tabs component. So we'll call this FS dynamic feed in our script. FS dynamic feed. I'm going to go and reset IX. Just set that to true, and I will go and copy this code. That's it. Didn't even have to write JavaScript. It is all here for me. We just need to understand where these classes go and how this structure works. So now I will go inside page settings. You can do this in site settings if you have this all throughout your site in the same structure, but since we're just working with one page, we will copy and paste this here. Before we go and publish this, let's look at how the site looks without any code. We'll go publish this, we'll look at it, and then we will publish with the FN Suite CMS library. Cool, so let's view this. Nice, okay, this is exactly what we would expect to see without any code. Great, now let's go and publish with our library script code. And when we go and load this page, we're going to see all of our tabs, all of our tab panes. When we click on them, it is loading the correct content. So we have Eum, Eum, Amet, Amet. This is working flawlessly. We have our tab component working as expected. You can go in and adjust settings. Settings absolutely work here. So if you go and want to change the easing or the fade in or the fade out, works. If you want to go and apply Webflow interactions to the tab panes, works. It is totally flexible and totally works with the tab component. That is how you build a CMS powered tab component in Webflow. If you have questions about how this works, if you've gone through this walkthrough and it still is not working for you, please reach out to us. We'd love to help. We're FinSuite. We are here for you, the community, to help you build awesome things in Webflow. Go to suitejs.io. That's our JavaScript support center. We will help you implement this on your build. That's FinSuite.